PWD Social Football Club of Bamenda carried the day earlier today in Triple League. Cameroon League 1 champions beat Al Ali 2 goals to 1 in an international friendly. The game was played at the Triple International Stadium. The first goal was scored by Chindo Boris and the second was scored by Nde Collins. The Abakwa boys have now recorded their first international win since they were crowned champions of the Cameroon League 1 championship in May 2020. Both teams will clash on Saturday in November 21 in the return leg game still at the Tripoli International Stadium. Good evening uh, ladies and gentlemen you're welcome to the 6.30 Prime News on my major prime live from Douala the economic capital of Cameroon. My name is Gienda Peldrin Blanche King, Minister of Territorial Administration, Paul Atanganji, has banned movement D million nowadays. In a release signed today, the minister notes that the activities of the movement poses a threat to national unity. Last month, the movement launched a complaint asking for 30% admission quota reserved for northerners into the National School of Administration and Magistracy in NAM for 2020-2021. Academy here. Away from that, now on to something else. Some internally displaced uh, students from the northwest and southwest regions of the country who wrote the 2020 General Certificate of Education GCE are yet to receive via results from the Cameroon General C Certificate of uh, Education Board. What is keeping via results is uh, what our reporter Fabrice Keninga tells us in the following report. Some 11 internally displaced students from the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon who sat for the 2020 Cameroon General Certificate of Education, GCE, in both the ordinary and advanced levels have not received their results from the Cameroon General Certificate of Education Board. According to the external candidates who registered for the exams and wrote under center number 11613 at Grupa Bilingual International College in Yaoundé, they have not received their results and all attempts to get clarifications have been futile. The candidates who paid their registration fee to the chief of center and proprietor of the said institution have been left on their own with no explanation from authorities of the school. After reporting the matter to the Ministry of Secondary Education, who, according to the candidate, ordered the proprietor to go to the GCE board head office in Boya and rectify the issue, all they got was threats from the owner of the school. Speaking to an official of the GCE board who refused to be named, he made mention of the fact that the candidates were not registered by the GCE board. He went further to indicate that other authorities of the Cameroon GCE board had even called Gropa, the proprietor of the school, to show up, but he has never showed up. At the moment, these young Cameroonians who have escaped from the ongoing war in the northwest and southwest regions of the country are confused after having paid huge sums to the proprietor of Gopai Bilingual International College, who is alleged to have diverted the funds into his private pocket. The proprietor is on record to have threatened my media prime reporter seeking for clarifications. Observers opinions that both the Ministry of Secondary Education and the Cameron GCE Board need to go beyond phone calls and bring this unscrupulous individual who is frustrating the future of young Cameroonians to book. After all, there is no Cameroonian who is more Cameroonian than the other. Let's now listen to some of the candidates. They're calling on the Minister of Secondary Education to come to their aid. We are some students who wrote the GC 2020 exams and in the, in the school known at Gopa Balungwa International College. And we are unable to have our results. Since the result came out, we went there and they told us that we cannot find our names in the result list. Uh, uh, list. We thought that maybe we are, we are paid, but they make the, due to the explanation that the dean of the school explained to us, he told us that the GC board can never release our uh, 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 result because they register us late, that the late registration of which we, we registered our GC the 18th December 2019. But we came, we came, we, we, we discovered that they, they register us on the on the on that was on the 21st of July 2020. We never knew what was going on between the teachers, the, 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 the dean and, uh, the, the, dean and the, 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 the director of the school with the principal. So the day we were about to write the exams, we weren't there to write. The, 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 our, our, we had our individual timetable, but we couldn't find our name in the registration, uh, 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 register attendance, which, which shows that they never register us at the GC board account. 
They told us that since we had that case, that they will be writing a complaint every day. They will be writing a subject. They will be sending to the GC board so that they can do something for that. But still, uh, we were just like afraid, and we were not feeling comfortable. But they make us not to feel com uh, uncomfortable. Uh, due to that, we wrote exams peacefully, and while waiting for the result, the result were out already. We went to the government, to social media, to check and click. Neither we are making or not, we couldn't find an. About 28 students that we are having this problem. But out of these 28 students, none of their results are not out. None of their slips are not out. We are calling on the ministry. We are calling on the ministry of secondary education. That mama, you are the governing body of the secondary education. Pity us and pity our parents. Inhabitants of Bumakai locality in Boya are calling on local administrative authorities of Boya to look into the epileptic electricity conditions in the area for over a month now. Talking to some inhabitants of the locality, they expressed bitterness as they continue to record huge losses. Details with Clarice Ekowe in the following report. Any business person like this woman operating a coastal business have incurred financial losses due to the absence of electricity in Bumaka, a locality in Boya. We really beg the government see what we get to do with the life because we don't tire. Like me, we do uh, market. Now, fridge is fridge below. Fridge, that's still on being roughly one, more than one month today. No light. And then it don't make a fish or it don't spoil. It's a bit on every stop. Yeah, so you need light. So the thing about all of it. The customer they can't buy something, we know they will taste that they don't burn area, they tell them they go use them, they come back, if you know what if we change them. Yes. So the effect we have a night in the Makado day and I reach this area. They want to be on that six o'clock seven o'clock, they don't pack, then go to the house. No, we say. So, yes, we don't be for the Bumaka. We don't even get like light no day. We just buy a can. We don't use crazy stay, use good lamps stay. You don't pass me. This is a lot of children and I say, we will wait for say I want to. We don't meet up my state cast for them. If every actor say, where mommy, go and go see that side, it could be. My state cast to go and go for the road, which way to the everything I say, move hold on. So, they say, hold on, we say, I want to. Likewise, them, students have equally been negatively affected as they are unable to conveniently study in their homes. Many years today, we have not been going to school. Now I've decided to go to school, no, like, for almost about two months. It's bad. I, I, I try to use candle. It's very painful in the eye. Oh, no, that you don't have light. So I'm forced to go and read elsewhere. I'm forced to go and read in more. With the rising rate of crime waves, inhabitants of Bumaka are also worried about their security. Thus, they are calling on local administrative authorities to quickly look into the issue of electricity blackout in this area. Be down. But they can't put the light, they will be happy. No, we are crying as we crying as we are men. You make a clear and give me light. No, say the place not guns. They will not be for that. Go there for that. So we need no way to the commode. Can we can take me for house. So we need for the sea money face. So now we line all this so you go make the thing do this on way. We so don't you tire the thing so don't you be saying no. Why we check now so go mask out for a new man. You go see, can't see for a problem. We don't pass with. While inhabitants are hoping that local administrative authorities will look into the issue, they have resulted in using lamps and rechargeable bulbs. The population of Batoke village in Limbetu subdivision have been reassured of the steady supply of portable water in the days ahead. The reassurance comes with a field visit paid by His Royal Highness Chief Otomolungo Molive to the ongoing water extension project. As our reporter Kumono Rimbong tells us. The population of Batoke village has been called upon to put their hands together for the realization of the water extension project which is ongoing. The call was made by the traditional ruler of Batoke village, His Royal Highness Chief Bulungu Otu Molive, while on an inspection visit to the water catchment site at the foot of Mount Itindi. The water extension project is championed by the Batoke village traditional council and is expected to supply portable water to over 2,000 inhabitants of Mbasi Tu and surrounding environs which has been without water for the past three months. The project 
which is estimated to the tune of over 3 million francs CFA, envisages the construction of giant pillars, a flyover, and the extension of galvanized pipes to increase the supply of water to Mbase 2 and Batokenyu layout. All of us will put our hands on them to make sure we realize this project and know the sea water is live. Uh, and the deal will have to appeal to the population to do that and not uh, getting work and money, but they should be patient. The work that we are making is a natural disaster. And as you see, we are not letting our efforts to see all the uh, 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 collaborations to the chairman, quarter heads, all of us who came up here to inspect the project and to see the shortcomings. The chief equally used this occasion to announce to the public the operation saved the roads scheduled for next year to improve on quarter roads which were eroded by torrential rains during the raining season. By next year we have uh, this uh, operation of operation saving our roads because we see what happened in the last rainy season, most of the roads are eroded, so we are coming up with a scheme to build up the waters. So I will appeal to the population that when the time comes, through the administration, we are going to chip in something that will enable us to realize this project by buying cement, gravel and stones. It should be noted that the Batoke Water Extension Project was programmed for last year. However, due to some shortcomings, the project could not be realized. The recent outing of the chief, alongside the chairman of the village traditional council, chairman of the water management committee, and quarter heads, reassures the population that water crisis in Batoke village will be an issue of the past in no distant time. Councillors of Santa Council in the Northwest region have voted over 1 billion francs as revenue and investment council for uh, our budget for 2021. Mayor Samkia Elvis Ngamiam the second world doubles as a traditional ruler called on the councillors to be proactive in order to attain council goals of uh, development in the days, months or years ahead. Details with our Northwest correspondent Charles Kebwa. Councillors of the Santa Council today, November 13th, at the new Santa Council Hall held the Council's extraordinary session for the examination and adoption of the Council's budget for 2021 an action plan for the municipality. In the presence of Mesam SDO Simomo Emil, His Royal Highness Samki Elvis Ngamnya II, Mayor of Santa, who doubles as a traditional ruler, used the Council session to call on councillors to be proactive in order that the council attain its goal, fight the ongoing crisis and educate the youths. The fund has a sacrifice when the fund gives a sacrificial goat and asks people to cut that goat. It's like a national kick. If you don't have a life, you will not have yours. So therefore, they should know that. If their children failed to go, fail for education, it's equally as they will not benefit from the national kick create farm to market roads for farmers of the municipality to have easy task in transporting their goods through small money big chain we have to create farm to market roads for, for farmers to have easy task to transport their goods to the main urban center looking at the revenue situation of the council for 2021 financial year whose revenue stood at 461,806,900 francs and investment at 871,577,730 francs. The councillors anonymously voted 1,336,384,630 francs as Santa's Council's budget for 2021 including public investment budget from the state. Centralization is to bring power to the people, to to the people. So if that voting this budget is to keep it in Santa here and to develop Santa with the budget, the local is the only way to only develop Santa with the budget. Mezam's SDO Simu Emil Mo appealed to the councillors to continue sensitizing the population to respect the barrier measures in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic and encourage farmers and business persons pay their taxes for the development of the municipality. 
Some entrepreneurs in the Northwest and Southwest region are undergoing training in Boya. The training organized by the International Level Organization in partnership with the Ministry of Small and Medium Sized Enterprises is aimed at training entrepreneurs on how to sustain and grow their small businesses. Details with Clarice Sikoy. Venice and young entrepreneurs drawn from the Northwest and Southwest regions undergoing a five days capacity building workshop in Boya, organized under the umbrella of the International Labor Organization, ILO, in partnership with the Ministry of Small and Medium Sized Enterprises in Cameroon, SMEs. The aim of this training is to train these local business experts on how to manage and sustain business startups. This training is one of the several economic growth projects by the ILO as Bad Gajan, ILO specialist, shed lights. It's about what we call social economy. The government has, uh, has brought a national program of the social economy and we, we support the government in implementing this program. And the third thing is about uh, the building, building, uh, external building capacity. So in, for, in, the first, in the first area, we have um, partnered with the APM to, 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 to um, launch a SYB program, SYB program to start a program, business program. So it means that we train, train us uh, for the first, the first stage, we are going to train. Presided at by the Secretary General at the Southwest Governor's Office, Dr. Muhammadu, he stressed on the importance of SMEs to the economic growth of the country. We have close to 202,000 enterprises in our country. And uh, out of, of the statistics, 98% who represent uh, close to 197,000 small enterprises. You can imagine the importance of this sector. This sector um, is uh, the sector giving opportunity to our youth in terms of job, but also is the sector who contributes in our economy. Being something that will benefit the local communities, the mayor of the Boya Council, Barista David Mafani, described the initiative as a golden opportunity that you should exploit. At the end of the five days capacity building workshop, these participants are expected to transmit knowledge acquired to other startup owners in their respective communities. In the report that follows, Imancom projects the life and career of a female bricklayer who is breaking stereotype opinions with passion. Emerencia Nanine has been working at construction sites in Boya, southwest region of Cameroon, for seven months now. Her commitment and good work relationship with her male colleagues have won her the title Queen of Chantier. She carries out same functions as men at the chantier but specializes in shaping iron rods. Being a holder of the Cameroon GCE Ordinary Level Certificate with subsequent training in hotel catering, Emerencia has worked for several restaurants and hotels in the southwest region of the country. When asked what inspired and propelled her to delve into building construction work, she said, For me, I believe that if you hear power for you or you gain knowledge for something, you don't believe it she don't say that only man can let it go. She also confessed that her pay package from Shantia work is way better than what she got as a hotel staff. Emerencia makes at least 3,000 francs CFA a day and is able to take care of her siblings and her son who has stepped into the shoes of his mother doing chantier work to help her pay his fees and take care of other needs. Emerencia confessed not having any problems working with men. According to her, her male colleagues have been very supportive and understanding. For that one, I would say I get my own, I, can't, I cannot carry a bag of cement. For now and then, no. But this, she said, does not affect her pay in any way. On the contrary, Emerencia... We now revisit the story of a student who stabbed his uh, classmate to death over a card game that turned sour. This took place in Kiki in the Baba Noble Division Center region of uh, Vikentry. Tapa Conte has more in the French language. 
Mohamed Yan, élève en classe de seconde F4 au lycée technique de Kiki, aurait escaladé la barrière de son établissement pour se livrer au jeu de cartes au lycée de Moukour avec ses amis, toujours dans le même arrondissement. Malheureusement, il sera poignardé par Kevin Kimi, son camarade, en raison du jeu de cartes qui aurait mal tourné. Il jouait aux cartes et la partie s'est mal soldée. Ils ont commencé à bagarrer peut-être. Et son camarade a sorti le poignard, a piqué à ses niveaux. Conduit dans un centre de santé de Kiki, Mohamed va passer de vie à trépas. De nombreux coups de poignard reçus à la poitrine ne lui ont pas accordé une chance de survivre. Il a touché, selon les déclarations du médecin, le poumon. Et moi, ça m'a suivi. La violence en milieu scolaire devient vraiment un phénomène, pour ne pas dire... Une pandémie. Son corps a été transporté à la morgue du centre médical de Ditry de Kiki. En rappel, ces cas de violence mortelle en milieu scolaire sont fréquents dans la région du centre. L'on se souvient encore de celui du lycée de Colbisson où un élève de quatrième avait froidement poignardé à mort son professeur de mathématiques en salle de cours le 14 janvier 2020. Pour l'instant, deux suspects ont été interpellés par la gendarmerie de Moukou pour leur exploitation afin d'établir la lumière sur le véritable coupable qui a pris fuite après avoir posé l'acte. Mais pourquoi les violences de telle envergure continuent à résister dans nos milieux scolaires C'est la question qui taroute les esprits. You're still on to Prime News on my media prime away from national news. Alim Sama takes us through Africa for what makes news. A famous Malawian fugitive preacher, Shepard Bushiri, and his wife, Mary, have handed themselves over to police in their country after skipping bail in South Africa. The couple turned themselves in in Malawi's capital, Lilongwe, Wednesday morning, as reported by the BBC. They were released on bail earlier this month by a South African court after being charged with fraud and money laundering. However, Bushiri told his supporters on social media that his decision to skip bail was due to the fact that he had been receiving death threats. The Democratic Republic of Congo says it is now Ebola free after more than 40 days without a case. The latest outbreak of the deadly disease in the northwest of the country was its third in two years, but vaccines and treatments developed during previous epidemics now offer hope to patients. Since 2018, it should be noted, DRC has faced back-to-back -back Ebola outbreaks, with some of them overlapping. At the start of June, several patients were diagnosed in Bandaka, Equator's provincial capital, and 130 people went on to contract the virus, with 55 of them dying. In Morocco, gunfire has continued along the disputed buffer zone between the country and the area fueled by the pro-independence Polisario Front in Western Sahara this week. UN spokesperson Stéphane Dujaric on Tuesday said the peacekeeping mission in Western Sahara continues to receive reports of shots being fired during the night at various locations. Sidi Omar, the Polisario's ambassador to the UN, said the action of the Moroccan forces had reignited a war after a 30-year ceasefire. While in Ethiopia, government says its security forces have made major military gains in northern Tigray and are marching on the regional capital, Mekele. The Tigrayan insurgents say they are putting up resistance at another town, Alamata. Refugees from the region continue to pour into Sudan, giving harrowing accounts of bodies dismembered by explosions of people being hacked to death. Less than two weeks after war broke out, many have also been displaced within Tigray. In sports, the World Football Governing Body, FIFA, has through a letter instructed the Cameroon Football Federation to ensure the continuation of the Cameroon League 1 and 2 football championships. This comes at a time when General Pierre Semenge is insisting that the LFPC remains a legitimate body to organize local championships in the country. Details with sportsman Fabrice Keninga.
The wrangle between the Cameroon Football Federation and the Cameroon Professional League does not seem to end anytime soon, in spite of FIFA's intervention. In a communique signed by FIFA's Deron Mosongo Ombo, recently the World Football Governing Body, after a video conference with the warring parties, called on the Cameroon Football Federation to ensure the continuation of elite championship under its supervision. The letter signed by FIFA's Chief Member Association's officer also indicates that a FIFA team will visit Cameroon in the weeks ahead to better understand the situation on ground. Following this correspondent address to the Secretary General of the Cameroon Football Federation, the Head of Communication at the Federation signed a press release on Tuesday, November 17, setting Sunday, November 22, 2020 as the new date for the commencement of the championship. On his part, the president of the Cameroon Professional League, General Pierre Semenge, signed a communique indicating that the LF person is still in control of professional football in Cameroon, contrary to rumors of his dissolution. The communique signed this Wednesday, November 18, states that the result of the opening match of the League One Championship between Cotton Sport of Garouan Panthers Sportive of Dende is valid. He has therefore set aside Saturday, November 21, 2020 for the continuation of the championship. So to say, the judgment of TAS reinstating the LFPC as the institution to organize the National Division 1 and 2 championships in Cameroon is yet to bring peace within the football milieu as the battle has reached the apex. Observers are however hoping that FIFA's decision could see football that has been absent in the country for close to nine months resuming in the days ahead. And that's it for today's edition of Prime News on My Media Prime. Thanks for being with us. Uh, join us at 6.30 Cameroon time tomorrow for another edition of Prime News on My Media Prime. My name is Genda Pelgin Blanche King. The news was produced by Ewane Eli Nolinga, coordinated by Lasha Kingsley. Stay tuned at 7 p.m. Cameroon time. Kumlona will be live with uh, Prime R. Happy viewing. Good night.